All right, so I've already done a couple of questions here about polynomial inequalities, and I did this what I, in a, with a method called the test point method, where you find your intervals, you pick a point, or you pick a number, and you test it. So uh, test points is kind of what I call it. I don't know if that's really what it's called or not, but that's just what I call it. But there's another way of doing it. You can actually do this with a graph. You can look at the graph. Use your graphing calculator and do it that way. So, the, the, but there is a trick, though. You still have to find these numbers right here. You still have to find, some people call them a critical values, but since we're doing it with a graph, they're the x-intercepts. So you still have to find the x-intercepts of it, and it's it's pretty easy here. We've, we found out that if, uh, if x minus 3 is a factor, then the x-intercept is 3 comma 0. If x plus 4 is a factor, that means that negative 4 is one of the zeros, or negative 4 comma 0 is an x-intercept. And likewise, 1 comma 0 is an x-intercept. So what you do is you, you just draw this really roughly by hand. So here's 1, 2, 3. So there's an x-intercept, and there's an x-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's another x-intercept. Now we just need to figure out how the graph goes through here. So if I go to my graphing calculator, I'm going to type this in my graphing calculator. And it would be x minus 3, x plus 4, 1 minus x. There's the negative 4, the 1, and the 3. So looks like it comes down this way. It's off the charts, but I'm just going to make it kind of back around. It doesn't have to be exact because all you really care about is what part of the graph is above the x-axis and what part of the graph is below the x-axis. If you look back, this says you want to know where what x values correspond in such a way that when you plug in the x value, you get an about you and you multiply it all together, you get a number that's less than or equal to zero. And looking at the graph, even though you might not think it, it actually tells you. For instance, what happens if I plug in a negative one? Well, you know what? I don't know what value you get, but I do know that the y value for this point is a negative. Right? Does that make sense? Negative two. If you pick if you plug a negative two in for x, right there, right there, right there. I'm not for sure what happens, what actual value you get here, but I do know since the graph is down here that the y value is negative. Remember all these values here, that the y values, they're all negative y values. Anything you pick between negative 4 and 1, anything you pick is going to give you negative y values. You go to your table on the graphing calculator and verify that. You're going to get negative y values. Right? You're going to get negative y values. Anything between 4 and 1. And what's so great about that is I well, less than 0 is negative. So my answer here is going to be from 4 to negative 4 to 1. And where else is the graph negative? Looks like when I pick numbers out here. Right, I can highlight it. Maybe it's a little easier if I highlight it. This part is negative, and this part of the graph is a negative part of the graph. Right, from 4 to 1 and from 3 to infinity. So, your answer then, in your answer box, is negative 4, 1, union, 3, comma, infinity. Because those are the two parts of the graph that are below, that are, that's the, you, it's, these part below, this part of the graph here is below the x-axis. I call it a negative part of the graph, and you want negatives because it's less than. And if the uh, inequality symbol had been flipped, you would look at what was above the x-axis. So let me write this out. Let me see. If I have this or this, right, a less than zero or a less than or equal to zero, 
I'm looking for below the x-axis. If I have a greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero, right, we're looking for above. What part of the graph is above the x-axis? And what this does is it's a lot less work. My God, you got to in the other method, you got to pick a number from each one of these, plug that number in up here and see if it works. It's a lot more work to do it like that. So uh, the other example I gave was was this guy. Right? And I already found those x intercepts. Right? So I'm going to assume that you can do that part. And let's look at the graph of it. So the graph, you got your x intercepts at negative one half, zero, and four, zero. So if I look at the graph of that, negative one half would be right there, negative or a positive four would be right, right there. And the graph comes in like this. All right, and since you have, I would graph this right here. This is what I would graph, this part. Not this, I graph this, okay? And since it's a positive two, it opens upwards. So that's, why, that's how I know how to do it without a graphing calculator. It says less than zero. So remember what that means? The part that's below the x-axis. Well, this part corresponds from negative, negative one-half to four. So the answer here is negative one-half to four. There you go. It seems a lot easier, and it is, in my opinion. I always do these things graphically.